Hi guys, this is Jason at Geyser Wood Turner, and I'm having a really good day today. I get to hang out in the shop with you and play with some power tools. It's such a good day, I think I'd like to try some projects I've wanted to do for a very long time. It's also a good day to do a wood turning challenge. So for this project, we're going to do a resin box or container with a wood base and a wood lid. And this was a challenge from one of my subscribers on YouTube, The Sky Dweller. I've been wanting to work with resin for a while, but I've been waiting to cast my own since I don't have a pressure pot or a vacuum chamber or anything like that. I don't really know how this project's going to work out, so let's do it anyways and have some fun. So to start, I'm going to take a piece of cedar and I'm going to make a plug for the middle. And in theory, what that's going to do is give me a place to glue my beads and also something I can waste away with a drill bit when I want to hollow it out. So I have a couple pieces of mesquite to make the lid and the base out of, and this is the base. And I'll just mark out the center and then I'll cut it round on the bandsaw to make it go a little bit faster. So before I go too far, I'm going to lay out some lines so I know how everything's situated. So I lay out a line for the plug, I get out my skull beads that I found at a fabric store and I just had to have them. And I'll put another line to make sure that I have enough resin that's in front of their faces. I'll take that mesquite base we cut out and I'll round it in between centers. And I'm using a bowl gouge and coming from the side so that I don't tear the grain too terribly. And then I'll put a tenon on it that'll fit the size of my chuck. After mounting the base in the chuck, I was going to trip up the face, but I decided to use the parting tool to mark my layout lines, and I'll keep defining those lines as I work my way down and making this flat. That way I don't lose where I'm going to put everything. So I'll use a little Gorilla Glue and use the tailstock to clamp that in place. While I was waiting for the glue to dry, I went and played Halo for a couple of hours with my daughter and came back out, and it's not tacky anymore, and we're ready to go. I'll just make everything round on the plug and then in the mesquite I'll cut it down and lay a bead up there so I know that I'll have enough distance between the mold and the front face of the bead. I'm just going to lay out a couple of lines on this plug. I put four lines on it and I'm not sure if it's going to be the right diameter but we're going to try it just to see. And I'll put a little super glue on the back of each head and glue each skull in place and I started putting some on the bottom of the skull and then the back of the head and then going up in a line. When each line was done I'd spray a little activator or accelerator on the super glue to keep everything in place and then I'd move on. It just happened to work out that I'd put about four lines on there and then lines between that and then there was just enough space to fill up the rest with just a little bit of gap between the columns. I wasn't quite sure what to use for the outside of the mold so I thought when in doubt use what you have. So a two liter bottle, I cut the ends off and I'll cut down the middle and I'll form that plastic around the outside leaving a gap and I'll just tape it in place. I found that right where the seam was it wanted to curl in so I put some tape over the end just to kind of hold it in place. And then I'll put a bead of glue around the bottom because I realized it's going to leak if I don't. So a little hot glue takes care of that and I tried to do that along the edge in the seam but I found out that the heat from the glue melts the plastic pretty well so I stopped there and just decided to tape it up. And that worked pretty well, only had a few little leaks on the bottom and they didn't go anywhere. After all that work, we're ready to pour some resin into this mold. I had some polyester resin on hand. Be careful with this stuff. Do it in a well-ventilated area and wear a respirator if you can. Now don't everyone start laughing at me because I'm using a butter tub. It was a good plastic container and I marked it out by pouring the volume of water that I needed into it and making a line. So I'll put in the resin and then the drops of hardener. And there's a way to figure that out. It tells you how on the back of the can. And I'll stir it for about 
one minute and you don't want to stir it too fast you'll get a lot of bubbles into it so just get it good and stirred up and then I'll pour it in from the side and just kind of let it ease its way up and get as much air out of there as I can I let everything sit for about two days I wanted the resin to be good and cured before I started turning it and I noticed we're gonna have a few problems here there's a crack right there not sure what caused that if it was the core in the middle and the polyester resin shrinking or if my hardener to resin ratio was off a little bit but we're gonna take the mold off and give it a shot and see if we can avoid those problem areas or deal with them I had a little bit of difficulty getting this mold off I should have had some sort of mold release but I figured I could just put it in the chuck and turn off the rest of that plastic make sure you're wearing a face shield if you do something like that which you should be doing all the time anyways because there's going to be little bits of flying plastic coming at you. With everything back in the chuck, I can start removing some of this plastic and it's going to start coming off and flapping against the tool rest and making a bunch of noise. Just stop the lathe and you can tear it right off and just keep going. Just make sure you're being safe as you do. So I'm going to work it down and cut the resin just enough so I can expose the edge where the resin meets the mesquite wood and I want to see what that looks like to see if it's going to hold together or not. When I got down to the bottom there seemed to be just a little bit of a gap there and it looked like the resin had maybe shrunk away from the wood just a little bit or it just wasn't all the way sealed and since that's going to be a joint there that's going to hold it on I decided to put some thin super glue in there to make sure it's going to work and then let that dry. I'm going to mark a line on the top to where I think the top of this is going to be and we'll just keep working it down and I'll use a carbide tool to do that and you'll notice if it gets a little bit chattery go ahead and slow down your feed rate's probably going a little bit too fast so just take slow even cuts and you'll see what happens here as I get into that crack an explosion happened so as I got to that crack, um, it started to chatter and made a bunch of chips all the way around the top edge. So I decided I can clean that up and just take it into the tops of the skulls just a little bit. And they're just a white plastic, so it should be fine. Time to just flatten it up and remove that super glue and we'll be ready to move to the inside. I found a Forstner bit that was the right size to remove all the wood and just cut into the backs of the skulls a little bit as I hollow this out. And I'll use this bit to hollow all the way down and then I can clean up the rim, make a little place for the lid to sit, and I'll work my way into the inside with some scrapers, and I'll clean up the bottom because the Forstner bit will leave a little hole on the bottom, so I'll just kind of round that out. Cutting into resin makes a lot of thin, wispy shaving, so I always have a fan that's blowing kind of away from me, and you can see the mess that it really makes. It's a lot to clean up. We can do our sanding now. So I'll sand the outside and the inside. And I couldn't reach all the way to the inside, so I folded over some sandpaper and taped it to a stick, and it allowed me to get to the inside a little bit better. I like to do a little wet sanding, and I move through the grits till I got to about a thousand. My favorite part is using the liquid abrasive. This one is a swirl remover that I got for polishing guitars, but you can use a lot of plastic polishes and things you can get in an automotive store like Meguiar's is a really good brand. This is what really brings out the shine and makes it clear. Just rub that on there and you don't want to get too much of it on the wood, but you can wash it off with a little bit of water. You just have to wait for the wood to dry. With our resin base all polished up, we're ready to just part it off the lathe. And what I did is just hand sand it when I got all done. So creepy, let's make a lid for it. So just like the base, I mounted some mesquite in the chuck and I measured and with the dividers on one end, I scored a line and we'll go down to that line and just keep fitting it until it works. And I like to make a few lines in the bottom just to give you a surprise as you open up the box. And we'll just shape that and I'll turn it around in the chuck and just put it on that tenon and it's going to leave a few marks but it's not going to be really in a noticeable place so we're just going to make a pull on top or handle 
and just define that, clean it all up, and then we'll be ready to sand and finish. I ended up using walnut oil for the finish and it really brought out the color of the mesquite nicely. Who do you know that would like this project? Holy cow! I just can't believe how awesome that is. Take a look at that. Look at those skulls. Woo! This is definitely a project I'm going to try again. I loved it. Although I did have a few mishaps with some blowouts and some cracking. I might actually try a different type of resin like a Lumilite or something like that. But this was fun. That was an awesome challenge from the Sky Dweller. So thank you, O oh One Who Dwells in the Sky. If you thought this video was killer, get it? Skulls. Then like it and share it around a little bit. As always, if you like wood turning videos, subscribing would be cool. Be well, and we'll see you soon.